Hello, everybody, and welcome to race number 33 of Season 4 NASCAR Walmart Cup Series and the first race of the Contenders Round of the Chase for the Championship. And after this race, we only have three left until the end of the season. Hi, I'm Levi McIntyre, a.k.a. Thrash Maniac 99 the voice of NASCAR Walmart Cup Series, here to welcome you to the Dickies 500 at Texas Motor Speedway. This is going to be an exciting race here at the mile and a half of Texas where we're going to see some big wrecks potentially, some great racing, and fast speeds all in one. Let's take a look and see the new top eight drivers and points that advanced after doing well in the last round that they have made it over to the contenders round and those eight drivers include Jesse Setti, Zachary Fitzwater, Trent Dunham, Jekko Knight, Chase Oliver, Jesse King, Chris Thomas, and Chris Singer. So two rookies still up in the chase battle. The Chris's, Thomas and Singer, along with six veterans, Setti, Fitzwater, Dunham, Knight, Oliver, and King. So with that being said, with the starting grid showing up on the top of your screen, let's get this party started here in Fort Worth, Texas. Charles Sanford will be starting on the pole for this race, along with Anthony McCrory in the second position. Then the rest of the top five is Chris Washer, Eric and Rage, and Dorian Face Puncher. Then you've got Jekko Knight, Joshua Balkin, Kendall Maynard, Jesse King, and Chase Oliver in the top ten. The ladies and gentlemen, 51 laps. Boogity, 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 let's go racing, boys and the girls. <laughs> Charles Sanford off to a solid start. Clears the 61 of McCrory for the lead. But now here comes Chris Washer in the 10. And Chris Washer has been on a roll as of late. Last two weeks, he's finished in the top five. So he's destined to try to keep his streak of winning a race in every season in Walmart Cup alive. Charles Sanford leads lap number one. Let's look around in the back of the pack to make sure we didn't get any accidents taking place. And so far, we are... Good to go. And I apologize for the racing line being on. I had that on for something before. But next race, he'll be cleared. Battle for second. Anthony McCurry trying to use the high line to make some moves. But Chris Washer is able to run that low line to his advantage. And now he's going to try to go low underneath Charles Sanford for the lead. And Eric and Rage is going to follow suit. It might be three wide for the lead here. That may not be such a great idea depending on how close they're running. But Chris Washer does lead that lap and Eric and Rage was not really able... Or actually, yeah, Eric and Rage was not really able to utilize more of that lower line. Now, I just saw a car. I think that was Sanford who touched the wall. Oh man, whoa, near contact with McCurry and Sanford. But meanwhile, back up front, 
Eric and Rage has got the run to the inside, and he leads that lap. And another concern for these drivers here at Texas is pit strategy. Depending on if we get cautions during this race, we will see if whether or not they will have to rely on some sort of pit strategy for this race, whether they want to pit early or pit later. But Eric and Rage has got the lead, and Jekko Knight, who is the one of the eight drivers who advanced into this round, he's up here in the second spot. And Jesse King, who's another top eight points driver, right there in third. Speaking of which, let's take a look and see where those other top eight drivers are. Let's look for Trent Dunham. Wow, he's way back here in the 40th position. Now I wonder where he wants to be. Then the next car we're going to try to track down is Chris Singer. And he's up there, last scored in the top 10. And I think Danny Wells is going to probably get to the lead and ch chase Oliver right there behind him in 11th. Next up, Zachary Fitzwater back in 28th. Not that great of a spot for him. And then Jesse Setti up there in 24th. But Danny Wells actually ended up leading that lap, and now Jekko Knight is going to follow suit in second. But meanwhile, it's double the three wide racing back here. They can handle that kind of a race, and it's just if they try going four wide, be ready for a crash. That's all I'm going to say. Let's look around near the back of the pack, see who's all running back. And Mitchell Riggs, who has just not had a great chase performance, in fact, was one of the first four drivers to be eliminated in the uh, sleeper round. And he comes in this race dead last, I believe, in the chase standings, and indeed 16th place. There is last week's winner of Talladega, Marco Rose, running back here in the 29th spot last time scored. And whoa, Jesse said he got the wall, but she's going to maintain position or just maintain her boundaries. Got to keep an eye on this. It's three wide with Sanford, Michaels, and P.J. Williams. Meanwhile, as we rotate back up to the front, Danny Wells continues to lead the way, and Danny Wells is trying to go for his second win of the season and third win of his career. He will be returning to the four car next season in season number five. It was speculated Marco Rose might have wanted to take that spot, but Danny Wells making a comeback. Marco Rose will instead be in the number eight car in season five. And then once we get to season six, we're going to have divisions for one more cup series where we're going to have go or go home style qualifying racing to determine who would get in two races since we're expanding with Walmart Cup Series in Season 6 with manufacturers and rides combined. So there's going to be a lot of sign-ups positions to come and be filled when we get to that point. But meanwhile, let's take a look and see how the top 10 shapes up right now. Danny Wells is the leader. Second is Jesse King. Third is Jekko Knight. Fourth is Chris Washer. Fifth is Anthony McCrory. Sixth is Gabe Williams. Seventh, Michael Norman. Eighth, Joshua Balkan. Ninth, Brandon Gonzalez. Tenth is Ian Dutta. So you got three out of the six Roush Fenway cars in the top ten, almost in the same order from eighth through tenth. Meanwhile, Eric and Rage and Chris Thomas are battling for the eleventh position. And back up at the front, Jesse King going to start trying to make some strides to catch Danny Wells. Meanwhile, back here, battle for third potentially brewing. Chris Washer tried going low underneath Jekko Knight. Hasn't been able to make it work yet, and now here he comes. Oh, near contact with the two. 
But Washer, he's going to lose some ground for now as he just had to back out of throttle there. And now Jekko Knight going to try to go underneath of Jesse King for second. And remember, if the race stays green, that right there is the battle for the points lead going into the next race at Kentucky. Meanwhile, I see th almost three wide back there from seventh on back. And I see chaser contender Chris Singer is up here in the mix. Battling within the top ten. Oh, James McLeod thought about making it really wide underneath Cody Lamas, but he's still going to be able to try to get by. It's like both lines are s almost evenly matched, though I think the low line still is the better line, but it's hard to get by somebody up high here. But Jesse King has fallen back, and now it's three wide for second. Jekko Knight, Chris Washer, and Anthony McCurry. And I think, yeah, McCurry definitely had to back out of the throttle to be sure he didn't wreck the 10 and the 5, but this is what Danny Wells is liking, is having those guys race hard behind them and just pull away. Last time by, he was scored a half a second behind, or ahead of second place. A half a second, I should say, not a second and a half. Let's see the margin this time with the top two. Six tenths. But Chris Washer is going to get the second position. As meanwhile, back here, you got two eliminated chasers. Sonny Hammond and Mitchell Riggs back here. Jesse said he wanted a top eight. It's back, back in the battling for 39th. With teammate and fellow female Jessica Shelton. <laughs> I apologize, I had to take some sips of water, but back up here, we're seeing some of those guys who were racing within the top 10 coming into the second place battles, Ian Dutta and Chris Thomas, and Chris Thomas, that makes him the third top eight driver in points up here battling for the second spot potentially, or the third spot really. Meanwhile, Danny Wells still has the lead, but Chris Washer's actually starting to close the gap on the four of Wells. As we are now 29 laps away from the end of the race, so we're just a little bit a ways away from halfway. Meanwhile, back here, battle three car battle for third with Jesse King, Jekko Knight, and Gabe Williams. And the 55 and the 5 are two of the top eight drivers, and now Chris Thomas, another driver in the top eight, is up here in this battle now. But Gabe Williams backed out of throttle, which gave freedom for Jesse King to move on by. Chris Washer only gained a hundredth of a second that last lap. So not really the kind of momentum he's really trying to hope for. And in fact, Jesse King's actually maybe going to start closing in the gap on him. <clears throat> Meanwhile, back here in ninth is Michael Norman, and in tenth is Brandon Gonzalez. And I tell you, Brandon Gonzalez has been one of the most impressive drivers in recent memory in Walmart Cup Series. He started off, started racing at, uh, I believe, Michigan. I believe was the race where he took over that 17 car for Dylan Thoreau, who will be coming back in Season 5 riding the number 11 car. But Brandon Gonzalez, when he took over that ride, he's just been on a tear, getting great finishes, top 10 finishes left and right, solid performances. I tell you, Brandon Gonzalez, he's going to be one to look out for next season as he's going to move to the number 23 car for Kyotech Racing. Danny Wells, nobody's really been able to close in on him too much. 
Although Chris Washer has been gradually cutting away into that lead, but coming very shortly will be green flag pit stops if we stay green. If we get a caution, then we're going to have pit stops most likely under the caution flag. Sonny Hammond back here still running dead last, and Jesse said he's the lowest of the top eight drivers in points and 41st right now. Meanwhile, it's 24 to go, so we are past halfway officially here in this race. Three wide for the fourth position, or actually make that fifth, with McCurry, Dutta, and Thomas, and almost contact with Dutta and Thomas, and McCurry backed out, and old Danny Wells is in pit road. Danny Wells is the first car to come in the pit road for a green flag pit stop, so he gave up the lead. Did anybody else come with him? No, just Danny Wells. This could be interesting strategy on the part of the four. But then again, Chris Washer was chipping away at that lead. It depends on what happens. And now more cars are coming into the pits, and I thought I saw some debris from another car getting into somebody. Thought I did, but right now, this is the battle for the lead right now. McCurry and Dutta and Gonzalez. But now McCurry's starting to slow down. I think he's going to come into the pits. As is Dutta, and Dutta actually did a power move passing him up high. So great job. So now Zachary Fitzwater, if I'm not mistaken, I think is the last car to have not pitted. So right now, Zachary Fitzwater is the leader but not for very long because he has to come and pit here in just a moment and there he goes now meanwhile other drivers are in the pit still pitting away meanwhile as we're looking around to see who could be the leader right now and I think it is going to cycle back over to Danny Wells, but Chris Washer, I think, is a little bit closer, or maybe not as much as it was the last time we saw those two up there. And the caution is out. The caution flag is out. Trying to find out for who, as we're looking around for any damaged race cars. And I don't see any. Do you mean to tell me we're going to have a ghost caution in the middle of a race? Don't tell me this is actually happening. Because I don't see any cars damaged. May have been a spin out potentially. Other than that, I don't know what could have brought the caution out, to be honest. And I think Zachary Fitzwater is going to stay scored as the leader, but he's going to be restarting at the very tail back of the pack, potentially. Or is he going to be able to get up in front of the four? Who knows, but... Let's try to find out what brought the caution out for the first time tonight. Here at Texas. Well, first time ever in Walmart Cup Series history, we had a ghost caution. The caution came out and there was no cars damaged because there are no cars out of the race. No cars were damaged at all. No debris. So we had a ghost caution. And Zachary Fitzwater is the leader, but he's the last car in line. So the 45 might be in the catbird seat unless we get another caution. But anyways, he's the leader. Second, Danny Wells. Third, Chris Washer. Fourth is Jesse King. Fifth is Chris Thomas. Sixth is Ian Dutta. Seventh, Gabe Williams. Eighth, Michael Norman. Ninth, Anthony McCurry. 
tenth is Brandon Gonzalez. Then it's James McLeod, Eric and Rage, Joshua Michaels, Joshua Balkin, PJ Williams, Brandon Nichols, Kyle Singer, Chase Oliver, Charles Jackson, David Rivera, Jekko Knight, Jessica Sheldon, Henrietta Fitzwater, Chris Singer, Trent Dunham, Dan, uh, Dylan Young, Kyle Matthews, Jesse Setti, S Sonny Hammond, Cody Lamas, Kendall Maynard, Seth Cole, uh, Austin Weiner, Rue McIntyre, Charles Sanford, Mam McIntyre, Marco Rose, Dorian Face Puncher, Mitchell Riggs, Biggie Spencer, Justin Nichols, and then Preston Plore. That is the field as it looks. But Zachary Fitzwater is the leader with 15 to go here at Texas, but he's the very last car in line. Are we going to see a repeat of Joshua Michaels again from this from Texas earlier this season? Up here is where the battle for the lead should be, as Danny Wells has got a challenger in just, uh, Jesse King and teammate Chris Thomas underneath for second. Jesse King's going to get that spot, though. These guys are going to have to hope for a caution to come out. So the 45 could get back in line, or they'll get back in line behind the 45. Speaking of the 45 of uh, Fitzwater, he's put two cars a lap down, Preston Plord and Mitchell Riggs. Two cars have gone a lap down. This could be a win-win situation for Zachary Fitzwater or a lose-lose because he's going to deal with a lot of lap traffic to where he could end up getting caught up in a crash and that's going to open the door for somebody else to win this race. But right now Fitzwater trying to work within lap traffic and he's put two cars a lap down. Now he's about to put the 31 of Matt McIntyre a lap down. And as I heard, uh, I think Sonny Hammond scraped the wall just a little bit. It shocks me how they're not wrecking in turn three when the cars go up the track like that and they don't wreck anybody. That's just amazing. And Sonny Hammond is now on the added list of lap down machines. Preston Plord actually got his lap back by racing by the 45. Meanwhile back here the second place car is Brandon Gonzalez as it will now be 10 to go here at Texas. But Brandon Gonzalez really should be the real race leader right now but due to the scoring error Zachary Fitzwater is the leader, but he is the fourth to third to second to last car on the track. Yeah, those guys who are up there in the second position on back are going to have to hope for a caution to come out so they can get back in line behind the 45. But Fitzwater working well in that lap traffic. Technically, we really shouldn't have had a caution because nothing happened to bring it out. There were no damaged cars, no debris, so I have no idea why NASCAR brought the caution out. Right now, this real battle for the lead that should be happening is heating up with three cars, Brandon Gonzalez, Chris Thomas, and Chris Washer. <clears throat> and now, here comes Chris Thomas underneath for second right now. As much as I hate saying that this is the battle for second when it should be the battle for the lead, but due to NASCAR's scoring screw-up, the leader is that car right there, the 45 of Fitzwater, and it's six to go now. Still trying to get through some lap traffic as he's put Charles Jackson, Seth Cole, and Rue McIntyre a lap down now. 
If they're if those guys up there are going to want a caution, they're going to have to have it come out now if they want a chance. As it's five laps to go now here at Texas. And right now, Chris Thomas is the guy up in second. <clears throat> I'm thinking about having a new... Well, maybe not. I'm considering maybe having a new rule of some sort in a uh, Walmart Cup Series, and that is if a caution comes out that way where the leader is the last car in line, where there's nobody behind him, then we may have to discuss that. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not, because I don't know how people would feel about that. But like I said, this should be the battle for the lead up here with these three cars, Brandon Gonzalez, Chris Washer, and Chris Thomas. But like I keep saying, that 45, due to a timely fake caution, had the lead as he was in pit road, and due to it coming out, the scoring got screwed up to where the 45 was the leader, but the last car in line. And if he does win this race, he gets a free pass into the season finale at FTF in the final race and the final round, the championship round. As it's two laps to go here at Texas. For Zachary Fitzwater to get his third win of the season and fourth of his career. And now he's getting ready to come to take the white flag. White flag is out for the 45 of Fitzwater. The only guys who are second on back that would hope for him for hope to win is if the 45 would wreck, but I don't think that's happening. <laughs> and now the 45 is going to come off of turn number four. And he's going to win. Zachary Fitzwater wins the Dickies 500 at Texas and it automatically advances into the championship race at FTF. But these battles up here are far from over right now. Who managed to get second? Brandon Gonzalez. Wow, great job. As everybody's going on by to complete their uh, final lap, let's take a look and see how the results ended up. Zachary Fitzwater wins controversially just like Joshua Michaels did at this same track last, uh, last time we were here earlier in the season. But Zachary Fitzwater's going to win here at Texas. So great job for the 45. Managing the pit while caution came out, it was timely for him to get to that lead but be the last car in line. Wow, that is going to be controversial to a lot of fans and drivers. We're going to we're gonna end up maybe discussing whether or not we should have a new rule as regarding to that, where the leader, the quote-unquote leader, is the last car in line with nobody behind him, then the guy who's in second, first car in line, is going to be the real leader. But... Anyhow, or anywho, but Zachary Fitzwater is going to enjoy that win, though he probably didn't want to win that way. But he's going to get the win nonetheless. Brandon Gonzalez gets his best career finish of his entire Walmart Cup career. Second place, unbelievable for the 17 team. Chris Thomas, great run of third. That's going to put him as the highest driver in the point standings that didn't win yet. Jesse King gets a solid fourth place finish, so that's going to put him third in the points right now. And Chris Washer, third straight top five finish. He's trying hard to win a race before the season's over. But Danny Wells, who dominated this race, he's going to come away with a sixth place finish. Michael Norman, solid seventh place finish. Ian Dutta, great run of eighth. Eric and Rage, solid ninth place finish. And Kyle Singer, Rounds out the top 10 in 10th. Great run for him. Rest of the top 20 was James McLeod, Brandon Nichols, David Rivera, Marco Rose, Joshua Balkan, 
Jessica Sheldon, PJ Williams, Joshua Michaels, uh, Jekko Knight, and Henrietta Fitzwater. The rest of the top 30 was Austin Weiner, Jesse Setti, Preston Plord, Gabe Williams, Justin Nichols, Trent Dunham, Charles Sanford, Chase Oliver, Biggie Spencer, and Dorian Face Puncher. And then the rest of the cars that finished on the lead lap were Kyle Matthews, Cody Lamas, Dylan Young, Chris Singer, and Anthony McCrory. Everybody else finished a lap down, and they were Mitchell Riggs, Kendall Maynard, Seth Cole, Charles Jackson, Matt McIntyre, Sonny Hammond, and Rue McIntyre. But that does it for our coverage of tonight here at Texas. The next race we have is at Kentucky. And then we've got Homestead where a theme is happening. All Ford drivers, and this is a one-time race, racing thing, but at Homestead, since it is aptly named the Ford 400, all the Ford drivers will be running Ford EcoBoost paint schemes. So that's going to be unique, but maybe confusing, but it's going to be interesting. And then after Homestead, we got the final round, the championship round, the one race battle for the championship at FTF. But anyways, here are your results. Rookie points, regular points, chase points heading into Kentucky. But I'm Levi McIntyre, signing off. <laughs>